Here we are at the National Trust property of Broadway Tower. This really is the crown of the Cotswolds. But you wouldn't think that below our feet is a relic of the Cold War, a nuclear bunker. Right here, this was part of a series of similar monitoring stations designed to observe the effects of a nuclear explosion and the aftermath of that. Teams of men and women would stay for up to three weeks here. What they would do after that time, I don't know, presumably go back outside. Uh, but this is where they were preparing for the possible um, results of a Cold War. Fortunately, that ended, for now at least, and the site was closed down in 1991, but it is still open to the public uh, at the weekends when volunteers, former members of the Royal Observer Corps who were, were based here at the station, would show people around. So let's go and have a look inside. So are there many of these sites still um, you know, accessible or have they all been shut down, sealed off? No, there are, there are quite a few that have been renovated. Right, really? And uh, there's not that many that are open to the public. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm. Oh, but this, this one is, I think, the most, uh, most visited one. Yeah, and it's in such a glorious setting. I mean, this view well, is incredible. And, yeah. uh, I suppose that's why it's here, isn't it? Because it's so high up. Uh, well, yes, yeah. Because it was a monitoring station, is that right? Well, that's it, yeah. yeah, yeah it, was it was for monitoring nuclear, uh, nuclear attack. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So, and the quality of the air and, and so on. Uh, um, well, that's here. what, yes, yes. So, the, the equipment here right. does that, yeah. Right, so, what, what, what are we seeing here? Talk me through it, John. Well, this, this is known as the ground zero indicator, <laughs> right. which is uh, got these holes yeah. in it, yeah. uh, north, east, south, west, oh, and I inside see. there's four photographic papers. So, when a bomb goes off, Gosh. the flash a burning image onto the paper, oh therefore you could then be reported through to the headquarters, uh, the bearing and the elevation of it, and then from the other posts in the area, yeah. they could then draw the, on the map. Triangulate and, between and them. Triangulate yeah. exactly where the bomb was. That's amazing. Yeah. So it's almost quite old fashioned technology, but obviously, you know, well, something that is basic, bomb proof. Yeah. yeah pretty well, much, right. it's yeah. alive. Uh, right. From a distance, something like that. Incredible. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, please. And what then, else is there? And the equipment there was for measuring the radiation. Oh, yeah. the, it was a, when we go downstairs, yeah. you'll yeah. see there's what's called a fixed survey meter. Right, nice. Which is like a, it measures the radiation. Oh my gosh. So you push that up through there, oh, so it measures really? it, yeah. Oh, but the people inside would have been safe from all of that? Well, that's right, yeah. 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 Wow, yeah. that's incredible. And, and they were stationed here for what, three weeks at a time, is that right? Well, it would have been, yeah, if, if there'd actually been a new attack. Oh, I attack. see, okay. Yeah, the three, there was enough provisions for three weeks. Yeah. So what would they do then? Well, they'd have to come up, I suppose. Well, they'd have to come up and see what devastation oh there was God, in the country, really. yeah. All right, so I'm going to go inside. Come follow me. So here we are in a nuclear bunker, 15 feet below ground, right next to Broadway Tower. Although you wouldn't know, all this was there, below our feet. And this remarkable place, one of the only few remaining monitoring stations out of over a thousand, is a very special uh, attraction here in the Cotswolds. And I'm about to talk to the people that know about this place, and they're going to show us the detail and tell us the stories right around us now. This is one of uh, almost 1,600 bunkers that were built, built in the late 1950s, 58, 59. This particular bunker was built in June of 1960. So built for the Cold War era and built as a reporting post. It would have been manned by the Royal Observer Corps volunteers. The first thing that would occur that would be registered would actually be the shock wave that would uh, pass through and that would register on what we call the bomb power indicator. Um, above ground there are baffle plates and that shock wave would travel through the pipe and would register on this dial. So anything registering 20 or higher mm -hmm. in kilopascals uh, would be noted 
this would reach its highest point and remain static. Mm. That information would be noted, the time taken, and that would be reported through to Oxford HQ. Individuals themselves uh, do have to go up above ground. Mm. They will retrieve sheets of uh, light sensitive paper from what is the, called the ground zero indicator. Mm -hmm. And those sheets of paper will actually show where the um, actual detonation yeah, has occurred. Yeah, yes. So there'd be four sheets of paper I and see. it would register from the flash yeah. as a, um, a scorch mark on that paper. Yeah, so this would so be here, pretty north. Yeah. That's correct. That would actually show uh, what would have been an air burst and uh, you could have air burst, you could have mm -hmm. ground burst. Mm -hmm. But uh, in increments of five degrees that will tell you the bearing mm -hmm. and also the elevation of the uh, of the, the blast itself. All of the posts are given numbers. Yeah. We are post number 10. Mm. Post number 10, Oxford, as we're known. And you'll see a dotted line connecting us to number 11, which oh, is a yes. post called Ink Barrow, and number 12, which is Bidford on Avon. So many of them. Absolutely. Well, there's close on 1,600 of them throughout the uh, United Kingdom. That's incredible. So the three posts would collate the information mm. and one of the posts, mm. any post ending in a zero or a five was designated as being a master post mm. and that post would transmit on what is called a teletalk mm -hmm. um, information through to uh, Oxford HQ. From this piece of equipment, this is known as the WB1400 um, and this would give what is called a confidence tick. Uh, so if you've got that confidence tick, mm -hmm. very much like a heart rate monitor, yeah. that tells you all is well in the outside world and you've got nothing to fear. Yes, yes. But once um, the attack warning red mm -hmm. notification mm -hmm. comes through and that would be repeated, um, so you get that attack warning red, attack warning red, attack warning red, you know the country is now under a nuclear attack. <laughs> when we were down here for the weekend, mm -hmm which uh, was about every alternate month, yeah, yeah, yeah. we'd have to uh, come down on a Saturday morning yeah. and not go back yeah. home till Sunday night. We'd have to go through all the training processes, right. but then again, every now and then, yeah. we'd have a game or something. And some of the crews were mixed, is that right? Oh yes, yeah, okay. they were male, both male and female. That's interesting. Tell, yeah. Gosh, uh, um, yeah. Nice and equal. Um, yeah. Wow, so... And all ages, what was the age range? Well, uh, from 15 through to whenever, really. Really? Yeah. Gosh. I think uh, some of the oldest were sort of in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. 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 And were you like trained like you know, as soldiers before you joined the Observer Corps? Or did you no, just go no, straight no, to the Corps? No, we were just uh, trained to do the duties, right, yeah. Yeah, which was generally uh, maybe an hour each week. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We'd come up and do different things. And then... Uh, Every alternate month we'd have a, a whole weekend. Yeah. There are today no more than 40 posts that have been wow. restored oh. throughout the United yeah, Kingdom. Thousand, Many of them have, that had closed. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of them in fact were uh, filled in. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The brickwork was demolished mm. and um, basically the land was repatriated to its former right. self. Right. Right. Yes. And uh, those that have survived are uh, the ones obviously that mm. didn't go through that process. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and of the posts that are still remaining, not many of them are uh, accessible to the public. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs>